Hello, everybody, and welcome back to page 47 in the workbook. We're going to be working through example one in this video, and this will be our first example of actually doing some calculations of finding coordinate vectors. Okay, so let's read the instructions here together. They say, in each of the following, beta is a basis for the vector space that it spans. Calculate coordinate vectors relative to beta for the indicated vectors. Okay, so starting with A here. So they're giving us a basis that is a set of polynomials, beta equals 1x and x squared. They tell us this is an ordered basis, so we want to pay attention to the order that we're writing those polynomials in. And we'd like the coordinate vector for p of x, which looks like 3x squared plus 2x plus 1. Okay, and finding a coordinate vector is all about asking how do we build this polynomial p of x as a linear combination of what's in beta. All right, so we're going to write p of x equals, and then we want to ask, how would we fill in the blanks if we write down our basis vectors in the order that they're given to us, 1x and x squared? Okay, well, that just comes down to looking at p of x and asking what needs to happen here. So we can see that we've got a 3 in front of the x squared, a 2 in front of the x, and then a 1 for the constant term. And that means then that the, that the coordinate vector of p of x, okay, our notation for that looks like this, the coordinate vector of p of x relative to beta is just the column vector that consists of those coefficients, tells us what we, what we need in the blanks to build this polynomial. Okay, there's our answer. Okay, moving on to b, this is a very closely related question. Notice that the p of x has not changed. The only thing that's changed is the order of the vectors in our basis. Okay, so same thing. We're asking how do we build p of x, but this time we want to list the basis vectors in the order that they're given. So x squared first, then x, and then 1. Okay, and this time, to build our polynomial, we need a 3 in the first blank, a 2 in the second, and a 1 in the third. Okay, and so our coordinate vector becomes 3, 2, 1 this time. Okay, so again, coordinate vectors are just about finding coefficients, the coefficients that it takes to build whatever vector they're giving us. Okay, and let's continue just to build a little bit of practice here. So in C, they're giving us a basis consisting of vectors in R3, and they'd like us to find coordinate vectors for v1 and v2. We'll, we'll do those one at a time. Okay, so starting with v1, okay, I'm going to try to be careful here so that we don't run out of space. So how would we build v1 as a linear combination of these three vectors? Okay, now here it's not quite so easy to figure out what, what goes in the blanks. Okay, so let's, let's do this step by step. Okay, so looking at v1, I'm going to start by focusing on the third coordinate, negative 1. And the thing I'd ask you to notice here is that as, as we're trying to figure out how to fill in these blanks, notice that there are zeros in the third coordinate, okay, for the, for the first two vectors in our basis. So what that means is that getting that negative 1 in the third coordinate comes down to just what goes in that blank. Okay, notice that there's a 1 in the third coordinate here, so we need a negative 1. Okay, we don't have a choice about that. If we want to get this negative 1 in the third coordinate, then we need a negative 1 in that third blank. Okay, good. So, now that that's established, let's clear a little bit of clutter away here. And we can move back and ask, what about the second coordinate? We'd like to get a 3, okay, um, in that second coordinate. So notice that we've got a zero sitting there, so it's totally irrelevant what goes in that first blank. Um, we've got a one here, and then we've already filled in the third blank with a negative one. We don't have a choice about that. So the question is, what would have to go in this second blank in order to get this three here? Okay, well, let's think about that. We've got a one here, and that one's going to get multiplied by negative one. That gives us a negative one. What would we need to add to negative one to get a three? We would need a four. Okay, notice that if we sort of look at it left to right now, we've got four 
times 1 is 4, plus negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, and 4 minus 1 is 3. So looks like we've got the right thing in that center blank. All right. So now two of our blanks are filled in. And we can move back and ask, what about the 2 in the first position? OK, well, to get that 2, it all comes down to, what do we want in that first blank? OK, so let's look at this one piece at a time. If we focus on the first coordinates, we've got a 4 times a 1, that's a 4, plus a negative 1 times a 1, uh, that's 4 minus 1 is 3. So what plus 3 gives us the 2 that we have here? It seems to me that we need a negative 1 in that first blank if we want that to work. OK. So um, I'm going to leave some space here because we want to do a second calculation. But what that means so far is that the coordinate vector of v1 relative to beta is going to be negative, negative 1, 4, negative 1. Those were the coefficients that we came up with. All right. Uh, let's see if we can do the same thing with v2 now. Okay, so leave a little space here. Okay, and if you like, if you feel like you got the idea of what we just did, you can maybe pause the video and see if you can fill in these, these blanks on your own for V2. Okay, so maybe you gave this a try for V2. Let's do it together just for a little extra practice here. It's going to be the same process as what we did for um, V1. So we'll start with the third coordinate, which is a zero. Um, since there are zeros here and here, that tells us that it all comes down to what we need to put in the third blank. So what times 1 would give us 0? Zero? 0 is the only way that we're going to do it. So we're kind of forced to put a 0 in the last blank to get this third coordinate to work out for us. All right. And then we'll move back to the second coordinate, which looks like a 7. OK, there's a 0 in the second coordinate there. So we don't need, even need to worry about what's going to happen in that first blank. Um, and let's see, we've got a 0 times 1 there. So what do we need to put in the second blank to get a 7? Seems to me that we need a 7 because 7 times 1 plus 0 times 1 is going to give us the 7 that we need in the second blank. All right. All right, and then finally, let's see, we've worked our way back to the first coordinate. Here we'd like to get a negative 4 in the first coordinate. And so far, what we've got is a 7 times a 1 plus 0 times 1. So we need to add something to 7 that's going to give us a negative 4. And if you think about it, we need a negative 11 there. Okay, and you can double check my calculations and make sure that that works. All right, so what we have then is that the coordinate vector of v2 looks like negative 11, 7, and 0. Okay, there are our two answers. Okay, so let's continue. That was, that was a little bit more challenging than some of the ones that we've done so far. Okay, so I'm going to scroll up here. And d is kind of about matrices. So we've got a basis involving matrices, but the idea is the same. We'd like to build the matrix A as a combination of the vectors in beta. All right, so what, we, what we'd what we like is to be able to say that 2, 5, 5, negative 3 equals something times our first basis vector plus something times our second basis vector, okay, plus something times our third one. Okay, and here I'm thinking it might be a little easier to figure out what goes in the blanks just because there are so many zeros in our matrices. So to get a 2 in the upper left-hand corner, we really have to put a 2 there. Okay, and then to get these two 5s, we need to put a 5 there. And then finally to get a negative 3, okay, we need to put a negative 3 there. I'm kind of leaving it to you just to do the addition, convince yourself that those numbers work that we have. Okay, and so the coordinate vector of this matrix A would just be the vector that contains those three coefficients that we found. Okay, 2, 5, and negative 3. Okay, one more to go here. All right, so just so that this doesn't get too cluttered, I'm going to draw a line here. Okay, so E 
would like us to take the basis um, 1, 2, and negative 1, 5, and to build the vector 1, 1 as a combination of beta. Now, this is a little more interesting because beta is sort of, it's a basis that doesn't, when you look at the vectors, they don't have a lot of zeros in them. Okay, so we're still asking the same question, and that is, how would we write 1, 1 as a linear combination of those two vectors that were given? Okay, but at least for me anyway, it's not obvious what we need to put in the blanks to make that a true statement. I can't just do that by inspection. And so what we can do is just to say, okay, um, what would it take to do that? I'm just going to give the coefficients that we don't know a name. We'll call them A and B. Okay, and if we, we, we've done this sort of a problem before, this really amounts to a system of equations. We know that one has to equal a times 1 plus b times negative 1. If we write out that equation, that looks like this. Okay, and then do the same thing for the second coordinate. 1 equals a times 2 plus b times 5. So 2a plus 5b. Okay, if you wanted to, you could rewrite that as a matrix. It ends up looking like 1, negative 1, 1. Okay, and then 2, 5, 1. And I'm trusting that by now, this is a system of equations that you could that you could solve. We've done this many times. So solving this system, okay, we're going to get A equals 6 sevenths and B equals negative 1 seventh. Okay, so those are the numbers that we need in order to build this vector 1, 1. And therefore, we now know that the coordinate vector of 1, 1 relative to this not-so-nice basis looks like 6 sevenths and negative 1 sevenths. Okay, and I believe we are finished.